then you can see it now, right there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, right there. Um, and then I'll just edit it out. So whenever I, I keep saying, everybody, in case we slag somebody, we don't pick them. We'll just <laughs> <laughs> Please. We'll pick it out. I know. Hi. Yeah, because well, well, you tend to forget that it's going out to other people other than just this. That would be good. Uh, edit, edit, edit. So, um, what do you want me to say? Do, do uh, Sean quickly wellness seeker? Do you what? Do you, what would you? I, no, that's grand. Just um, founder of the wellness seeker and um, founder of, uh, I suppose, creator of the clearing method. That's probably perfect. What? The clearing method, Billy. Clearing method. Clearing method, I. Right. That'll do. That'll do it. I can fill in the gap uh, as we go. All right, and I'll probably mess up a long way, but sure, it's all good. Ah, it's all grand. No, no harm done. No, but you're doing rightly back here. You're doing all right, don't you? Yeah. Doing amazing. I, uh, you know, amazing and the fact that we've probably a three year waiting list, had to close the doors. Um, amazing. The stuff that's happening is unbelievable. Unbelievable. A lot of international stuff coming down the, coming down the pipeline. Um, a lot of, well, hopefully a lot of work with the Omega Center and New York. And so lots and lots of stuff, book coming and all of that jazz. Yeah, so. I'm excited to chat about it's it. Amazing. It's amazing. I know. <laughs> it right. is amazing. You're you're coming and going. I wonder is that my internet just don't let me double check to make sure. We've we've had to get two types of internet on here. So just let me double no no. It's like fucking NASA wouldn't be as well wired as this place. Hold on a minute. Well listen, hey, if you're missing words, don't worry, I can hear it. I didn't hear so it must so Yeah, you, if, just let me do no, no, we're grand. We're okay. It's grand. All right, grand. All right. Well, what well, I'll just begin. You ready? Yeah. All right. What's up, Facebook? Billy Garner back again. And this time I have a, I keep saying old friend, but I'll not say old. I'll just say, <laughs> i just say a long serving friend uh, back when I lived in Derry. Uh, we pretty, well, I wouldn't say we grew up together, but we were in the same area. Um, I have uh, uh, the founder of Wellness Seeker, the founder of the Clearing Method. Um, she just recently did a TEDx talk um, and I think she was one of the first people from the northwest of Ireland to ever do one. And I am so happy to welcome and introduce the wonderful Shona quite late. <laughs> oh, thank you, Billy. That's a lovely introduction. It seems like we have known each other a lifetime at this stage. Oh my God, I know. I don't even want to go back. It has to be 20 years at least, don't I? I 20 years of running in the same clubs and saying hello. That's, that's as far as we'll take it. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it at that. Everybody say the same as soon as that. And that's it. All right. That's it. Um, that's up by their lives over and then move on. I know. <laughs> hey, well, uh, get a wee brief introduction. You know, it's like 20 minutes so we can see because obviously there's, there's bound to be, especially with the, the overwhelming fluctuation with motivational speaking, wellness, health, uh, even fitness. And you could call mental fitness, whatever you want yes. to call it. But, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who want to ask you a lot of questions or who, who've thought about being that person before. Um, so it'd be great to just bounce a few questions yes. on me. Perfect work away. And if I can answer them, great. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, hi, but first of all, TEDx. And how did how, that happen? That was, that was one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. In fact, it left me a bit of a kind of public speaking junkie. I was, it was like the best high I've ever had in my entire life. It was incredible. No notes. You're not allowed any notes. You're not allowed. You just have to, you had to just do it off the top of your head. It was incredible, an incredible experience. And the, the guys that supported were amazing. Absolutely phenomenal experience. So for anybody who hasn't seen it, what were you talking about? Basically, I was talking about the model that I have um, developed, the model of therapy that I've developed, which is called the clearing method. And it was, it's basically a somatic form of therapy. And that I was telling my story. So how that came to be, how that came to, how I came to curate that model. And it's my own experience of healing. So I told the story of my own healing journey um, on, on a TEDx stage. It was incredible. Well, when we finish, we finish this, so you maybe can pass me the link so I can put it out there as well. Uh, surely, 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 surely. Um, right, hey, so me and you can blabber on all day. Yep, well, yep. Let's get into the first question, and it is about okay. business, because hopefully it's about startups. So, right. first question is, 
what kind of person makes a successful entrepreneur? Oh, God. Do you know, in my journey, because as you know, I've been in business, well, I worked in retail for a long time. So I did a, a business degree and then went straight into the graduate program for Arcadia. So I worked for Arcadia and everybody doesn't know Arcadia, it's Topshop. And I, I went through their graduate program and was a branch manager and an area manager for payroll and all that stuff. And, and then you have your own startup. And I kind of realized through that journey, there's kind of two types of entrepreneurs. That's how I see it. There's the entrepreneur that loves the buzz of business, that moves on from one business to the other and is just passionate about business. Yeah, and passionate about new ideas and passionate about bringing stuff to markets. And, and then there's the other entrepreneur, and I'd see myself like that, who has a passion for the project that they're working on, like a lifestyle entrepreneur that I love mm -hmm. wellness I love I am like crazy about personal development and wellness because of my own journey my own healing journey and I bring that to bear through the entrepreneurial journey that I'm on but I will never come off that I don't think I might have very variations of products that will come from it but that I will do that then I'm 90 and so in that way I think if you have passion either for business or passion for the purpose that you're in business, if you've got either of those two, you'll be a great entrepreneur. Hey, what an answer. I don't know. That's just the way I see it. <laughs> no, just the way I, I see it. I, what, I, what I loved about it is that there, you described it as two, two people who love business and be entrepreneur and people won't see this but whenever sean i was saying people who like to dive in and out i was like that's me yeah and then you were saying you love the project and process yeah. Hi. Like, how and why i think i love it because i have a real passion and always have done on helping people and i i know what it's like to be helped i know what it's like to need help and i and so i come from that place the whole so everything that the wellness seeker the wellness seeker is about hope and it's about it's about helping people out of difficult spots anxiety emotional eating depression but it's not just about helping them it's about eliminating those problems that will be my forever project forever i am not an entrepreneur that will she will go to a different project or a different a different um, a, a different product or a different project, I will stay on that because it's inside me. It's, my, it's, in, it's in the fiber of my being. Oh. And I, I look up to people like, we have many friends that could put their hand to anything. Oh. But you know, we have, a, we have a mutual friend, Paul Doherty, he'll kill me for even calling him out, but he put his hand to anything. You know, yeah. he, is, he is an entrepreneur, he could, you know, he's, he's done how much now? I know. You know I don't have that on me, but he does. That ability to move across projects and have the same passion and purpose for it, it's incredible. I, I just have the passion for what I'm doing because it's so meaningful for me. But I think they have, I think you're one or the other. In fact, like I, the, I was set in front of an investor and, and she asked me straight out, I'll tell you it is. She asked me straight out and she's a pretty famous investor. She asked me straight out, uh, when are you going to sell the business? Right. And I said, never. And she says, well, I'm not interested. And I don't think we'll be an investor that is. This is a right. lifestyle business. I'm not amazing. And that's for me. And it's not that I'm not profitable. It's not that it's not an amazing business. It's not that it'll have a huge turnover. It's just that I won't ever sell it as I see it. And maybe that's naive, but that's the way it is. No, but I mean, if, you, if your heart's all in it and your passion's all in it, like, and if you did sell it, what are you going to do? Absolutely. Yeah, I see myself 90 in Bali with a retreat center and uh, spent my last days there. <laughs> and me knocking at the door to sign me up. And, uh, and me looking at the one and going, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. I know you. I know the stuff you get up to. Thank you very much, Jerry. <laughs> oh, no, no. I know you wouldn't have enough time in the books. But let's see. So that's the first one. Second one, what's, what's the first thing I need to start my business? So keep it relevant to yourself. So what was the first thing you needed to do? The first thing that I needed to do was I needed obviously a product and that sounds pretty basic, but my, my business is, is twofold. It's online. So we have an online school and I have a face-to-face -face therapeutic practice. So 
what you basically need to start is you need well you need a plan and you need a product and i think within that product what is it that you're selling what is it that you're providing what is it that you're giving because you're not in business until, unless somebody's exchanging with you sure so what is it and it's very very basic but you strip it right down what is it that you're that you're providing and is it a painkiller or is it a vitamin because the answer between the two of them will completely change how you start so are you in the business of painkillers or are you in the business of, of vitamins and and start on with that idea and start with a plan on how to get that out there, how to get people to understand what it is your product does for them, what it is your service does for them, and why you. And I think if you start there, what product, why you, and you start servicing that and you start speaking to people, then that's how you start. And you have to start inside yourself first. I think you have to start and say, what is it that I want to do? And what is, who is it I want to serve? And then you start from there. See, that's another great answer, especially because whenever people are watching this, they just think uh, doing business talks is about, um, you know, like uh, I think it, it wasn't Roosevelt. I think it was um, what, um, some New York guy. They built one of those buildings in New York, but he was talking about you have to find a problem, find a solution and sell it. And I think yeah. yours, although you're not saying that because you aren't looking to create a problem, yeah. you're just trying to find a solution to solution. people's problems. Absolutely. And, and that's how it all started. I mean, this has been burning inside me for years. I, I knew so much about the, the wellness, the wellness that is needed internally, but I kept it quiet. I don't think anybody would believe me. I, think, I don't think anybody would believe that I had cured myself from anxiety and I mean panic attacks. I just kept it quiet because my first degree was business and I just kept my head down and kept myself in retail. And, you know, and those around me knew what was happening for me. But nobody, I, I wasn't going around telling anybody that I was having right. this, you know, miraculous transformation. I was just doing it myself, for myself, by myself. And the TED Talk talks about that in great detail. But for me, this, you know, for me, this was about understanding how to, how to create real and lasting change inside, inside yourself and providing that as a service to others because I could and because right. I wanted it and because it's necessary. And so I, I felt like some sort of mission in the end. Class. Well, yeah, I know. And it's, it's so, such a misconception about not speaking about things. And, but again, we could go into that forever. Oh, no, we could be there um, forever with that. So. But still staying on the business side, that's mm -hmm. number three. Number three is, now you know what I need to do, who can I go to? So obviously when you were starting out, you were in retail, you shifted from retail to management. How did you start or who did you go to to figure out that this was your calling? This was the I knew it was my own call and I knew I knew I, knew I wanted it. So the first thing that I did was I thought, Geez, you know, who's going to believe me? I, a wee Gary from Derry, you know, working in retail, you know, who's going to believe me that I was able to shift my own anxiety, that I was able to move my own depression, that I was able to come out of this with a joy that I've never experienced and a newfound passion. Who was going to believe me? So I thought, I kept it to myself. And what happened was I went to university back to university and did a four year degree in psychothera psychotherapy. So I'm a qualified psychotherapist now. But I did that all in the background because I knew I needed basic qualifications that would allow me to stand on my own two feet. So not everybody needs to go back and do that. You know, that's not, not necessarily everybody needs to do. The next thing that I did after that, Billy, was I watched. I was humble enough to watch and learn what the people that were doing it well were doing. Right. And what I did was I became a 24 hour stalker of those that were doing it well. And I, and my husband will tell you, if there was 48 hours in a day, I would have spent 48 hours in a day siphoning, siphoning through some of the best speakers, some of the best motivational talkers, some of the best, I, you know, Tony Robbins, you know, just literally hacking all of the stuff that they were doing, how they were doing it, looking at their market and looking at. So I started there. I went and got myself a basic, basic psychotherapeutic qualification to give me substance because I think in this world it's helpful yeah. to have someone that gives you substance. I had my own story, I had my own journey, and then I went out and basically hacked. When I say hacked, I watched and 
that took away stuff I didn't like and basically copied how the how the big guys were doing it because they. But how do you how do you make it a business? How do you make it a business? Because literally, you go to school, you become, you get your qualification and a degree. You have letters after your name. You didn't just like do what a lot of people do and start up. You know, a lot of like people who watch this seem to watch Gary Vaynerchuk. He's uh-huh. not qualified and giving he's giving out a bunch of advice. Uh-huh. You're you're qualified therapeutic uh, uh, practitioner. Mm-hmm. So how do, how do you make that a business? Well, do you, it hap- I'll tell you what happens. Originally, I was in practice and that was fine, but I knew I wanted to share the idea of healing. I don't, I, as a product, as a painkiller, there's not enough information out there on, on how to get rid. There's a lot of information on how to manage anxiety, how to manage, and I wanted it to be different. I wanted to provide information on how to get rid of stuff, to be the painkiller in this industry, to be, get rid of anxiety, get rid of depression. I wanted that convers. I wanted to have that conversation with people, and it was my aunt that said to me, "What are you hiding for?" Because they all knew I had this journey, right? What are you hiding for? What are you waiting on? Because, you know, me, her, and I have a great relationship. She says, "Just tell people what you know." And in two, I think it's th- my first, you, my first live Facebook live video when Facebook live wasn't a thing. <sighs> Right. My first Facebook Live video, I think it was 2017, early 2017. I pressed go live, had never, hey, had never spoken to another loving human being, other than my own family, about, about what I knew. Press right. go live on a phone and went, uh, so here's what I know. And just spoke to the camera. Now, you know the town we live in. We live in a tiny dot. Yeah, and a tiny dot, and and a and you know, in a in Ireland, the top of Ireland, and nobody, you know, but and nobody really talked about wellness and all. That was that was three four years ago. We get ten thousand views, organic views, on one video that went out that day that talked about how to ease pain. It's amazing. I'm not- and then what happened after that was just crazy because what happened after that is that my one to one business exploded. And then because we couldn't service the one to one as much, then we started doing digital products, try and get that information out to try and help as many. So we had this huge waiting list and then we were saying, look, if you can't, we can't, I can't see you. So here's some of the digital products. So, and people started buying digital products and we started having right. an online school and then we have a business. Class. <laughs> See, I knew we get that. <laughs> I love it because you just explained that if I'm not physically able to do it, I can create a product that you can buy online and you can do that. And you touched on something as well that we just talked bef- about before we started recording, Melanie Bressler. And Melanie Bressler was kind of the same. She did not talk to anyone. She was, had so much anxiety. She was afraid to talk. But now her business has a face and she's, I mean, she's doing exactly what you would pretty much advise to do. It's phenomenal. Absolutely. I think whenever, I think it's fine to have letters behind your name, but there's nothing like personal experience when it comes to self-development. See, I'm, yeah, I'm just keep taking out. I'm keep taking out all these wee lines, and I'm just going to write them. <laughs> but, I get the copy. I the IP. I get the copyright on it. Oh yeah. Listen, I don't want to. I don't want to take up all your day, but I You're do right, finish off with maybe one or two. Um, I'll, actually, you know what? I'll ask you this because you do a lot of online stuff, and you do one day one, yeah. um, and you are just one person, so. Let me I'll ask, finish up with two. So this one is, how do I determine my startup costs in doing what you do? Or do I have any? Right. Well, startup costs are really easy for an online business. Incredibly easy. Like for, for a, a, a brick and mortar business, obviously your startup costs are going to be, you know, if you're in a therapeutic position or if you're in a coaching position, you know, your startup costs are just your, your basic kind of table chairs, you know, if you're go- and, and your rent and rates. You can do that really, really cheaply. But also what we've discovered in lockdown is I have now, this is my office in the house. I am online with every one of my clients. I didn't lose any clients. All my clients just migrated to Zoom because we, I have clients all over the world. I have clients in Zurich, clients in America. I have clients all over the world. So I use Zoom anyway. So there's not even any need for, for a bricks and mortar business now when you're coaching. So if you're thinking about coaching or thinking about therapeutic practice, there is literally no need. 
you can have a platform like Zoom. That's what, 14 pound a month or something like that yeah. for the most basic yeah. package. You have a nice background. Well, what's that cost you nothing? And right. then there's a suite of products that you'll need. You will need a website. You will need things like lead pages. What's that, 30 pound a month? I mean, there's all sorts of other stuff, technology stuff. But all in all, it wouldn't, in the beginning, it cost me, I'd say about 200 pound a month to service an online business. Brilliant. Ah, that's amazing. Awesome. That's, exactly, awesome. that's exactly what, 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 what people will be wanting to hear. Right, last thing. Best can I say people. can I say one more thing about that other stuff at first? I can I say one more, one more wee tiny thing? It's really easy to get caught in the trap when you're starting an online business. It's really easy to get caught in the allure of outsourcing your marketing and outsourcing your, your technology and outsourcing your social media. And it's really easy to get caught up in the allure of that, i.e., you know, big agencies telling you that they'll look after your market and they'll look after your... And it's really, really easy to do that. But here was my experience, and that's a startup issue as well. I remember going to a massive agency. And, and you know, the figures are phenomenal for anxiety. The, you know, the, 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 um, the figures are huge. There are millions of people searching. So they understood that I had something that would, if they could get it out to the masses, would be massive. And I'll never forget, we were only, I think we were only two months on the go at this stage, right? And we had a digital product, a digital anxiety product. And I'll never forget sitting down with a team and it was Invest NI that brought me down. And I'll never forget him saying, yeah, we can do this. We can run your funnels. We can run your social media. We can, you know, we can run all of this. And I'll never forget him saying, and that'll be 30 grand, please. What? And I was like, I don't even have 30 grand for myself. Never mind you. <laughs> you know that when you're trying to be all brave and you've only got started uh, and you're like, I look and I said, thank you very much. I'll have a think about it. I'll get back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a think about it. I'll have a think about it. I'll, I'll just check with my accountant, which I didn't have, and I'll get back to you. But I'll never forget leaving that. And, you know, when you surround yourself with brilliant people, you get great advice. I never forget leaving that day and thinking, there has to be a fucking better way than that. And so what I did that day was I went back to what I knew, which was source out the people who know more than me. And there's some amazing online marketers that sell digital products. Yes. The digital marketing, the teachy, all of that, and I made contact with a guy. A big, I'm not even naming my, but I name, a big guy in the in the digital marketing world. Yeah. Says I can't afford to pay you four grand for your program, but I can pay you every month. Can can you let me in, and I'll pay you every month. And we, I paid him a, a fee every month. He doesn't do it, but he did it for me because I asked him. He didn't do it for me. He didn't know me. I just sent him an email. Right. And we get access to a full suite of how to's, how to run Facebook ads, how to do funnels, how I get access to every, and I taught myself that every night. So I went into the therapeutic practice, did my products and taught myself all of that stuff. And that's the stuff that any new members of staff come in. I sit them down in front of the computer and say, you learn that. And we don't need to outsource. We don't need the we don't need to go to big marketing companies. And I also know the ins and outs of it. So when it comes to it and the business is big enough, I can have a proper conversation and not conversations that are, give me 30 grand for running right. Facebook ads, wise up. It's such, it's such a dairy, isn't there? No, that was brilliant. It's like you just, you, were, you had four grand and you were really doing it on a 200 pound talking about bootstrapping budget. Absolutely. Um, you have to do what you have to do. If you're passionate enough, which goes back to your first question, you will find a way. True. That's You'll that. find a way. Uh, great advice for anybody who's looking to start. I mean, this isn't just for your business. Hopefully somebody wants to do, do public speaking and more what you're doing. But it's, it's, you're so right across all, all aspects of business is that you always find a way. If you're passionate about what you're putting out and if that's in your bones, Look, you would find you find a way, and we find you every time we've had a barrier, we find a way. But if that's a long rounded way of talking about startup costs, don't have to be that big. You'll find a way. Right. right, best piece of advice, and you've given oh, a lot. Best piece of advice: learn to pivot, 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 pivot. Be humble enough to know when you've had a brick wall. 
don't be the smartest person in the room ever and learn to swivel and pivot when you had a wall and, and be humble enough to say that doesn't work. And we've had to do that this year. You know, we've put digital products out that haven't worked and we've had to pivot. And we've had, and I've been humble enough to say that doesn't work. That idea that I had didn't translate because it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, which is be a painkiller. So we, I have pivoted every time. And now in that pivoting and that being humble and seeing where my mistakes went, we are now about to be accredited. All our courses are going to be accredited by internationally recognized um, qualification as, as internationally qualified because we had to pivot. That's a great piece of advice, say, because you would hear so many people say, first of all, be the smartest person in the room. And if you're not the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Uh, I currently work for a guy who says he's the hardest worker in the room, which is a different story. But in saying that, you say pivot, some people say fail. Pivot. Okay. Learn to fail and learn to fail hard and fast. And learn not to be ashamed of that failure. Because it's in the failure you learn. Like, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a practical, a very small practical example. I have a very good anxiety product. It is a one-to-one -one product. It eliminates anxiety. And I'm not talking about managing it. It eliminates it. We transfer that and the individual product, and it doesn't have the same results. That is not good enough for me. It's not good enough for the wellness seeker because it's not what we're about. We're not about managing. We're about undoing. So if that digital product doesn't work, then it's finished, shut up, shop, go. So what does work? How do I scale? Well, I scale by teaching other therapists how to work and exactly. undo anxiety. So the failure of that product is completely fine because it's in the learning of that and putting your hands up and then saying, right, well, if that doesn't work, what does? Because if your ultimate passion is about helping people, then you just have to find a way of helping more people. That's not about money. That's, that's about following your passion, following your heart and learning to fail hard and fast and learning to take information from other people. Like I am surrounded by lovely people who give me the best advice, you know, that just give me advice like, you know, it has failed, like get up. Oh. So, so what now what? Right, no, I couldn't agree more. I'm a big fan of, I mean, we've all failed and I was talking to somebody, I said, that the only way for me to process was to lose money and that's not exactly the best answer <laughs> is by learning, but I'm a big fan of, you know, it's okay to change your mind. Absolutely, and you know, if, if it's not, it's not about you, when you take you out of it, when you take your, your ego out of it, you know, yes, you've had an idea for a product that has failed, but it has failed because it hasn't, ser hasn't serviced the people that you're in this for. What greater way of, what greater way of failing? Because uh, then, then it's not about you. No. Great. And then, I you, then you can get up and get on with Me and you can sit here and <laughs> chat forever. I know. And we won't because we're both fuzzy bees. <laughs> Listen, where can, uh, where can, will you send me a link? Can I get a link? And where can people find you other than just saying the wellness seeker online? Yeah, we've, um, I'll send you links. We have a website. I'll send you the link to the TED, TED talk. Um, at the moment, we obviously don't have any space for one to one. We'll be open. If anybody's interested in any training, if they're therapist or coach, we'll be opening a whole new side of the school in about, uh, about six months time. So keep an eye. Oh, really? Uh, is that like a hush slap thing? Did we just get like a wee secret on site? I, I, maybe. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. You can edit that, but I'm sure that's great. No, not, not a chance. <laughs> we're right, going sure. down the train and uh, we're going down the train and avenue very soon, so. Oh, Shauna, listen, mm -hmm. hey, I couldn't wish you more. I would, actually, I wish you more success and all the success in the world. And thank you for doing this. This was fast, but no, no bother at all. It was my pleasure. Thank you. And I'm sorry we didn't get down memory lane too much there. Maybe that's not I'll a just, bad thing. I'll, I'll just stop <laughs> recording and then we'll stay on for a minute. Oh, brilliant. Okay, thank you. All right. Well, uh, thanks everybody for watching. That's the wonderful founder of Wellness Seeker and the Clear Method. Shauna, quickly, Shauna, bye. Bye, bye-bye. Hi, that was class.